uh, they're using Dan Schneider's image and his name to market the documentary. Mm -hmm. And he is part of the problem, but he had nothing to do with this part right, right. here. And this part is way darker. Way darker. I cannot in good conscience talk about Double Toasted Live in LA without showing that image right there. Double oh, there Toasted Live in LA. That's from the art of Moss. He did that art right there. Some of y'all be getting that on a t-shirt, but I'll let you know about that in a little bit. So, man, if you're like me, yeah, believe it or not, believe it or not, I'm 52 years old, but believe it or not, I too was somewhat raised on Nickelodeon. I was there at the beginning. You were. I'm proud to when say. When they turned the lights on. Hell yeah. People saying, you had to begin up a lot of things, you old motherfucker. Hey, hey, <laughs> hey, hey. <laughs> You're at the beginning of the time. <laughs> hey, watch yourself, <laughs> young man. <laughs> but, <laughs> but no, man, I, 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 I grew up on Nickelodeon. Uh, I grew up uh, with the with the slime and you can't do that on television. Uh, salute your shorts. Some things I don't even remember, like uh, Pinwheel and... Uh, um, Danger Mouse. Oh yeah, yeah. You know, all, a, a lot of stuff, man. They had a lot of stuff, and I, I loved Nickelodeon as much as anybody else. However, the generation after me, and then after that, that's when y'all were getting Nickelodeon in its heyday. You know, and, uh, that's when you started getting shows like All That mm -hmm. and iCarly and jo Drake and Josh. Mm -hmm. and, yeah, and you know that some people consider that some real golden years of Nickelodeon. Oh, but behind the scenes, that goal was not shining. It was very bleak. And little did we know that there were a lot of horrible things, a lot of horrible things going on behind the scenes. And a lot of people, they want to they want to they want to lay the blame on one particular guy. And that would be the guy in the center of this picture right here. Dan Schneider. Dan Schneider started out as an actor. What was the show? Was, what was he on? Head of the uh, class. Head of the, head of the class. And then he got over Nickelodeon and he had the right idea. He said, you know, it's the, the network for kids. Let's really start making some shows that adults have that kids don't have. He started making game shows. He started making sketch comedy shows. And they were instant hits. And some people say he really... Nickelodeon was was good, but he really was the one that was bringing in money for Nickelodeon. Making Nickelodeon the success that we know it today. Uh, but that success has been marred. The history of Nickelodeon is now scarred some kids' minds out there. Are the adults that grew up with that era, that era of Nickelodeon? Uh, all those things are being exposed here, at least alleged and talked about in this documentary, "Quiet on the Set," which, again, a lot of this is being sold as Dan Schneider being the monster that did all of this, but there it goes deeper than that, sadly and shockingly. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at this trailer for Quiet on the Set, and we'll be back with our discussion and review. It was a child actor. On one of our shows? Yes. Have you seen <laughs> <ever? laughs> <laughs> like, it wasn't me, was it? <laughs> well, hey, you don't want to. You want to pause like that, man? Cause you start looking guilty as hell when you do that. <laughs> okay, what'd you find? <laughs> am, am, I, am I in trouble? Have you ever told your story publicly before? So there's three episodes I think out right now. It's four total, and uh, you didn't see this, right? Well, uh, Martin and I saw all four episodes the fourth one might be out by now i'm not sure i just heard that the third one was out just now and they're about to put out the fourth one but let me see if i can find this here because i, I want to i want to have full disclosure about something here and let me see if i can find this a lot of people have been sending me this but if you in a lot of you probably already know about this. It's been making the rounds on the uh, on the YouTubes and some other places. But there is a uh, there's an interview out there with Dan Schneider with one of the one of the one of the kids or he's now an adult, but one of the people that was on one of the Nickelodeon shows, I believe. And I watched the interview, and I, I, you know, full disclosure. 
it swayed me on some things. I'm not saying that I'm convinced that he's a good person or anything like that, but you know, it did kind of change my mind a little bit on some things. I gave not even changed my mind, but just gave me a different outlook on things. Gave me something to consider. And and I would I would say this even before looking uh, at this interview, I did have questions for the documentary in the first place. I did have some I don't know if you would call them critiques, but I I did question the the, the documentary. Because I think when you watch this documentary, you can tell me what you think, Martin. And, and this is going to be hard to get into because, you know, when you're dealing with something where there's are so many alleged victims, I mean, I, I doubt if anybody's going to be happy with what you're saying. People don't think you're being sensitive to something or you're not you're not taking their victimization seriously. And I, that's then that's not the case right here. I just want to say that. So when I say this, I don't want anybody to think that I'm trying to blame the victims or be uh a, a sympathizer with the abuser. That's not it at all. But Dan Schneider, he is catching most of the flack with this documentary right here. And he deserves a lot of it, you know, uh, but I think there's a lot of misconceptions here. And this, you know, and this is just, this is not even opinion. This is just true. There's a lot of misconceptions that he's a pedophile. <laughs> right. That was the impression I had up yeah. until watching this documentary. Right. I, I will like, tell you, me too. I was like, oh, all these years, everybody's been making it sound like he was a pedophile. And it was everybody but him. Yeah. And I and I have to, and I'm not, and listen, I have to just tell you, to be honest with you, I was saying that. I was like, yeah, he he, he had a thing for feet and, and raped a bunch of kids and then pulled a Roman Polanski and left the country. And I, I was saying that. Yeah. And I was wrong. I was completely wrong about that. Uh, you know, people talking about him like he was the Harvey Weinstein of Nickelodeon. Right, right. <laughs> and, the, you know, and that doesn't appear to be true. Now, he was he was uh, he was very inappropriate, you know, because he, he was having people give him back rubs on the set. You know, he was joking around in very, very, very uh, inappropriate and abusive ways. He was putting himself in position with kids that adults probably should know better. I'm not saying he did anything wrong, but he was a guy that was trying to always you know, appear to be jovial and cool with the kids. So now he's hanging around with a hot in, in a hot tub, you know, with one of the girls and then and the girls leaning on him. And it's I don't think he did anything, but that's not, you know, that optics are bad on that. Sure. Also, some of the jokes that he said, that today they could be considered sexual harassment. You know, he he asked one woman to bend over and act like she was being sodomized and he was treating that like a like a joke you know and he, he didn't rape anybody he didn't do anything but there was you know was this uh it was this writer right here you know he kind of came in and dehumanized people because he could he was you know he you know saying that he created a, a toxic work environment was probably putting it lightly you know because he was very abusive at times that you can say you know he was some, sometimes he did out of ego sometimes he probably did out of pressure you know i've, I've yelled on air you seen me yell at people yeah 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 pressure and he was immature yes and and yes it, it was definitely a there's no arguing whether it was a toxic work environment or not um it was also during a time when being edgy and, and then doing that kind of shit was just would just fly all the time it was encouraged it was sometimes encouraged. yeah yeah <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. This, you know, keep in mind, this is the 90s where that kind of I mean, people it was very male dominated and the men were applauded for being, you know, just just brutes. You know? Yeah. It, any, any game company that I worked at or talked to people who worked at, mm -hmm. that was the standard environment. Yeah. I worked at a company with a lot of strong women and lesbians. They didn't, oh, <laughs> not, they did not have to take that shit. I, when I worked in human code, it was like, you better not pull no <laughs> shit <Good>. like that. <laughs> they made sure that you lose, they cut your dick off before you left at the end of the day. Yeah, they they weren't a hardcore game company. That's why I was yeah. always envied that you work in there because they they actually worked on you know uh, software and products that were for people. Not, yeah, not, you're not, right. Not, not not just gamers. Mine was not the norm. Yours was. Yeah. Let's not let's keep in mind that uh, was it was it a uh, was it EA where they had a Cosby room and all this kind of stuff <laughs> yeah. where they and they were always getting hooked prostitutes and they would crawl under desks like a habit trail and look at people's skirts. Like childish, man. Oh, they yeah, were childish. childish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, the behavior that went on in a lot of those places, it, um, <laughs> Nickelodeon was was liberal and, and progressive compared to those. Oh, yeah. No, I'm sorry. It was Blizzard that did that. Blizzard, yeah, yeah, Blizzard. That Blizzard did that. Um, but yeah, I mean, he was, he was verbally abusive at mm. times. Uh, and you know what? And I do think he was a sexist. I think he was a sexist and there's enough testimony to make me believe that. And there was something that he said, cause I listened to him and I listened, I didn't listen with no judgment. 
to that to that interview. And uh, there was something that he said in there where he argued that, you know, I am not a sexist. What these women are saying is 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 probably, uh, uh, you know, misunderstood. Um, Did he he say that? Because I watched the interview and he seemed to like cop to everything. There was one thing that he said, and that was about when the women were were not being paid equally. Oh, yeah. He split them up. Yeah, because he said that he wasn't in charge of, of He salaries. said he wasn't in charge of that. And he said, but then he said, he said, but he also said, and I did this to men too, you know, that if they wanted to come in. It was a whole thing where it was two women who said they wanted to get by paying us for cheap by bringing us in as a team so they could split the pay up where it should have gone to one individual. And they were saying and that, that didn't happen to other people. He said that it did. He said it with two men that he did it to. I would like to see those two men. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, I would. I mean, he didn't say he did it to them, but he said he worked with that when yeah. that happened. Like yeah. that was a, yeah. a, was a, a somewhat of a standard, uh, you know, procedure. It's just hard to believe what he says in that sense because he's, you know, he he copped to saying, yeah, I, I did do a lot of lewd things, and I did do a, uh, did put these women in some very uncomfortable positions. So was he sexist at the time? Has he learned now? Yeah, I'm sure probably. But at the time, yeah, he was very sexist, and uh, he's one of those people where shit, he better be glad that didn't happen today. Oh yeah. He, Shit, he would have got slapped with a sexual me, hashtag me too, uh, 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 sexual harassment lawsuit. And she said that I was going to have to split a salary with a writer that I did not know. So they were getting two for the price of one. They- so, you know, I don't know how much Dan Schneider had to do with that. His story is that it had nothing to do with him. I, you know, I don't know. He said a lot of things about women that that were, you know, just very disrespectful. And that's putting it lightly right there. Uh, you know, so I, I don't know. You know, I really don't know. Uh, something that we were talking about, Martin and I were debating about mm-hmm. this. Uh, they had, they don't show it in the trailer, but they were talking about how they had these, and if you watch the documentary, and they don't show it in the documentary because it could be seen as uh, very uncomfortable watching kids be put through this. But um, all the inappropriate jokes with kids that were like, you know, just funny loose gags at the time, they compare those now to, to you know, uh, images of, uh, of sex. You know, being squirted in the face and, you know, holding things like the phallic symbols and, you know, uh, uh, girls leaning over beds and uh, moaning sexually. I, You know, I, I still don't know how I feel about it because I see your point. You know, they did a lot of things like that. And some of those things I see what you're saying. You know, some of those could be just somebody just now taking them out of context. I, I felt like a, a lot of it was was that not maybe maybe not all of it, but I felt like most of it was that like I, I, I shy away from documentaries, especially this style, mm-hmm. because they tell half of what they tell is very much the truth. And with, with everything they had with those women to totally believe that 100 percent. I ain't got no yeah. problem with that. Also, with the pedophiles. <clears throat> yes. That shit happened and it's horrible. And I hate that that happened. But they have a lot of people commenting and speculating. They, they, and they, and they take, they're taking, you know, shots or, or little clips and going like, and you see how sexual that is. Cause like they're like, there's this thing with Ariana Grande squeezing a potato and like, and you see how that looks like a dick. And I'm going like, I'm sorry. I, and I wasn't me trying to be defensive. I was just like, when they were like, you see how sexual. And I'm like, yeah, where's it sexual? And I'm like, Oh, a potato. I don't know any potatoes that look like dicks. Yeah. I mean, I mean that you got a problem if every really place, every, every time you look somewhere, you see a dick. Uh, and and plus it was like like a lot of the comedy they were doing because they were doing all that, which is, mm-hmm. you know, it was kids doing Saturday Night Live. And Saturday Night Live has always been a, a, a quote unquote a, a inappropriate show. Right. But it's, you know, kids getting to do their version of these. Not all the comedy like Jimmy Lynn Spears getting squirted in the face. That goes back to I Love Lucy. That's just classic comedy. But somebody can take it and go, well, here's this clip. You see how sexual that is. I'm like, well, you do. And you're trying to make it that way. But I don't know, man. I mean, listen, you got a lot of I feel like you got strong material here. Lead with that. Don't try to make things leading just by manipulating things and then putting your commentary on because you're, you're taking away from the stuff that's actual, actually horrific and stuff we need to see. I, I tell you, man, I just kept thinking about this. I was like. Somebody could do this about us. They yeah, could yeah. They, they could they could go and have some interviews with some maybe some disgruntled ex cast members or friends and and come to me and say, hey, we want to interview you about the the double toasted and all that. And I might yeah. be like, I don't want to do that. So it would just say we reached out to Martin for comment and he he wouldn't return our our, our calls. And it's like, well, that makes it sound like 
I didn't say nothing because I knew I, it was guilty. I was like, no, I just didn't want to do it. Yeah, it, I, you know, okay, so I I can see some of that, but there were, <laughs> there's a couple of things that I probably wouldn't have done. Like I think it was Ariana Grande. Mm. Like, I, this is just me. I don't know. Maybe my taste is there. I would not have a little girl bending over a bed, leaning back, almost showing her cleavage and squirting water on herself while, while groaning. Uh, there was, then, then it was this thing where I was like, once I, I kind of saw it before they even mentioned it. It was a dude who came out saying he was nose man. And they, oh, I seen, and he, I seen that. And he, and, and, I, you know, I, maybe it was an accident, but he clearly had dick and balls on his shoulder. And they're supposed to be noses. I know, but they mean, but that, that's a long nose right there. <laughs> some big nostrils. And I'm like, man, I'm just saying, I'm not saying that it, you did do it. But on the other hand, it's like, uh, you know, maybe you were, you, these were jokes that you thought were funny and you kind of knew the, that they they were they were kind of sexualized and you just put it in there to be funny because you could get away with it. Now I say that, I say that thinking that maybe that's a possibility. I also say that, you know, in his defense, and I'm again, because somebody's already talking about, somebody already talking about, I'm, I'm defending Dan Schneider. You know what I'm talking about? Get out of here with that. Uh, in his defense, though, he, you know, he does have to get these by other yeah, producers, yeah. you know, he yeah. uncensors. So either they're all in on it and letting it happen, or maybe it was, you know, maybe just didn't age well. Yeah, that, yeah. I, I mean, I think a lot of it more is the it didn't age well, and we're in a we're in a, a period where people are putting a microscope to things. But but I remember because my kids would watch these shows, and I would watch some with them, and all that was funny. And and you think about hundreds of shows that come mm -hmm. in and out, but they go like, well, here's this one little clip right here. Well, here's this one little clip right here. And yeah, there's tons of adults around. It's not just him. There's everybody else on the set. There's the parents there. And then the executives and the censors and all these people who go, yes, go do it. Yeah. Yeah. Good for you. Uh, yeah. I mean, I, it's, uh, I mean, look, I I don't I, you know, I, I am not in the business of defending him. Uh, I, I do appreciate that he himself, you know, watches, watch the, the thing and was shook and just felt terrible. It's like man, I was an asshole and there's nothing I could do but apologize about it. You know, he he owned up to to, yeah. to everything. No, he no, he and, did. And, you know, I mean, you know, what can you do after that? Um, but it's just it's just it seems like that it's a it's an easy narrative to say he was the 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 one who was all powerful and we were scared. There's nothing we could do. But it just says it seem like if you really look at it, that's not quite the reality. He no, it's not the reality. I will say he didn't he he didn't help either. No, you didn't. know, like again, doing those back rubs on the set. No, making sexual jokes that you know you kind of brought this on yourself, being accused of being a pedophile, mm -hmm. even though you didn't. But you know how stuff oh, yeah. blows up, man. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm very confused about that. You know, and I also think about the stuff that they put kids through. Maybe it's just it's just made me jaded because there's certain things I just would not do. It's just it's just me. I mean, I, I there's certain, look, I look at because I'm looking at this fair. I know how it is to run things and then have somebody misconstrue something and say that you're a bad person. We right. just had it. We just had it happen a, little, a little while back. You know, I blew up at uh, not not this Julian, but Julian uh, uh, Hemendinger, and people were talking about how I abuse people around here. Right. You know, so I see it. At the same time, now and, even, and listen, if I was younger, I probably would be doing some stupid things. But I've always thought, like, you know what? You don't put kids in certain positions, and, and it's not even from me talking about my moral sense. I am, but it's like, man, you know, also from a sense of. <laughs> you know, you, you, you're going to somebody's going to accuse you of, of 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 the wrong thing and it's not going to age well. Like when they put that kid in peanut butter. Uh, you remember that? <laughs> you remember that part? Yeah. Uh, right. Like here it is. This is from Good Morning America. There was a kid that they hated. They covered him in peanut butter as one of these challenges. Uh, these uh, well, X Factor challenges. And they had him covered in peanut butter and had dogs come out and lick the peanut butter off of him. Turns Dare had him covered in peanut butter and then licked by dogs. I don't like this. To voice it. And, and to have voiced it. And that kid's mom came in and said, all right, this is enough. <laughs> <laughs> Shit, you about to, my boy's about to be a skeleton dad. Have no dogs <laughs> 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 they actually fired the kid because his mom was being a problem. <laughs> As she should have been. It's just things like that that just, you know, I don't know. I'm not just, it just, it just doesn't look right. And it just, I just don't. And this whole thing about apologizing is like, shit, man. I, I, I get the apology. And listen, I think people, 
I think people have a right to come in and and say I've changed. You know, yeah. I think I think people. I think people have a right to say I was young. I was put in a position where I probably wasn't mature enough to take it. Uh, I was, you know, my mind was too, was not ready. I was egotistical. I, I thought learned. everybody was in on it. We yeah. were all having fun. Yeah. Uh, I believe people could change. Now, as far as forgiveness goes, that's not up to Yeah, me. that's not, not up to us. You know, that's between him and his uh, uh, alleged victims. You know? and, and none of those victims are obligated to forgive him. No, they are not. And there's already one out there. Who, and this, see, this is what I'm saying, man. I don't even know if I would have done this interview. Because he did it. Well, and, and, I mean, and, and, and one person said, so he did the interview and one person came out and just said, you look, you're not going to win. One person said, man, he's not crying or anything. And then there's another part where he did cry. And some people saying, oh, that's fake. Oh, my God. So, <laughs> yeah, so yeah, you, you you're win. not going to win, you know. Yeah, <laughs> lose, lose. Well, yeah. well, you know, you, 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 you can't win, but maybe you cannot lose so hard. Because to me, it was good to see this. Because, yeah, yeah. you know, the documentary... Like they don't have his, you know, they don't have this interview. They don't mm -hmm. have a, a, any counterpoint of views. And, and, and yeah, yeah. And I, I, I think that's that's that shoddy documentary making. And Martin's, you know, you've heard two different uh, uh, opinions there. Martin is, you know, he didn't see the sexual stuff. And I'm not even saying he's wrong for that. He didn't see the sexual stuff that people are are, are accusing him of, of of doing. You know, I'm seeing it and, you know, and it's uh, and it was kind of disturbing to me. But, you know, again, People are gonna see different things. It's just, but I'm just saying this to let you know I'm not I'm not coming here and defending him. I think that you know, I, I I'm glad he apologized. I think that that's that you're not gonna win, but I'm glad he did it. It gave for if not for nothing else, it gave me a different perspective here because I do think that you know, and you're right, 100, Martin. When you do something like this, where it's a one-sided documentary, uh, it, some of this could be close to to. I, I'm using this word loosely here. Some of this could be propagandic mm -hmm. in a way, mm -hmm. just to slander somebody in a way because they, uh, because you know, and uh, because of the wrongs they already did, but you know, to just make those wrongs even worse when they didn't really do it. Yeah, yeah. They 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 do a lot of saying something, not completing it, and kind of like, well, I'll leave it up to you to decide. Yeah, it's like don't, don't, no, don't do that. Well, yeah, and see, that's why I'm that's why I'm saying this because with him, he. He mostly came across like a horrible boss. Yeah. You know, he was yeah. power and ego yep. tripping. Yep. A lot of things that, like I said, he didn't help his, uh, he didn't help his, uh, his image. The room of him being a rapist and a pedo, you know, doing all the things he did didn't help, but he isn't. But, you know, um, um, you know as we said, unfortunately, a lot of the stuff that he was doing was very common with people in the 90s. And you know, as I said, encouraged in some places. I, you know, I, some of this I wouldn't do, but at the same time, I could have seen myself doing some of the same things that he did do if I was put in that position back in the day. I mean, you know, you and I were doing shows during this time and humor was a lot looser and a lot more yeah. inappropriate. And yeah. anybody could go through if they wanted to go, go through our archives and dig up, dig up clips. And yes. Go, remember, they said this. I can't believe they said that. Yeah. And how sexist was that? Was that oh, they do me? They do that with me uh, uh, for something I said last week. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody still accused me of being a pedophile. Right. Because right. I like cuties. Right. Yeah. Oh, my God. See, well, that's that's a perfect example. Yeah. And just and just take clips of you saying things positive about the movie cuties about, yeah about how well it's made but like no he he likes that it. it's about underage girls yeah no i i get it i get it that's why i'm trying to be fair with this listen i'm not defending the man he was very wrong for yeah, what he, was, he did he was, he, oh yeah he, he, he was horrible no he was no he was he was a terrible terrible person terrible person he probably and that's why nickelodeon got rid of him and that's was well deserved so don't think i'm defending this man because i'm only setting this up because of where i'm about to take this discussion uh dan schneider story not cool, <laughs> right? Yeah. Actually, terrible, horrible guy who is, again, since apologized, take it as you will. But the shit gets deeper. Nickelodeon and the pedophiles, that's a what the f right there. That, you know, Nickelodeon hiring these, 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 these pedophile men to come in and work around children. Now, I'm going to tell you something. I'm not even blaming Nickelodeon like they knew because you never know when you hire you, somebody. You really don't. Um, no matter how much you do a background check, I worked with somebody who I had beers with. I went to see their shows and I can't say their name, but if I did, you could look them up. Uh, but that person ended up being busted for child pornography. Hmm. And, and it was funny because I think a lot of people thought I was going to be the one. <laughs> you know? do, do I know them? Uh, you probably do. I'll tell you the name after it's done. Mm -hmm. It was somebody, if you came to any of our parties or anything like that, you might have met this person. Okay. Uh, 
I had to find out through another friend of mine. Yeah. He said, you used to work with this guy, right? Oh, yeah. He was a pedophile. <laughs> I'm like, really? I'm like, I, looked, I was like, nah. Yeah, I looked him I know, up, but I was I like, know. whoa. I know. Yeah, yeah my, it happens all the time. Yeah, my, my friend, uh, my friend Mike told me this, man. But, uh, but yeah, man. Yeah, he got, and, and, and you know, like I, I don't blame people for, I don't blame Nickelodeon for hiring them. I don't, shit. I, you know, it's the same way with Subway. I never, you know, it wasn't the sandwiches that were raping people, it was Jared. <laughs> you know, I still, I, still ate a, I still ate a Subway after that. But, <laughs> but you know. <laughs> oh, you're, gonna, you're just going to eat that rape sandwich, huh? Yeah, that <laughs> pedophile sandwich. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I am. You're goddamn right. It's good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Mm, put extra sauce on it. But, you know, the thing with this is that uh, this is the part that keeps getting darker, though. Way darker than Dan oh, Schneider. Oh, yeah. And Dan Schneider's, don't, again, not that this is a contest. Dan Schneider's part is uh, dark, but this gets way darker, man. Yeah, 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 yeah. The part you're talking about, that pushed the whole Dan Schneider thing <laughs> out to the side. Because I'm going to tell you what my, my problem with this documentary is. Uh, they're using Dan Schneider's image and his name to market the documentary, mm -hmm. and he is part of the problem, but he had nothing to do with this part right, right. here, and this part is way darker. Way darker. It's, 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 I, I teared up on, on some of this, and yeah. it just, it just made me wish it never happened. You know, the only, the only way uh, I say that Nickelodeon should have known is because they had some old villainous pedophile names. One of them was named Jason Handy, and the other guy's named Brian Peck. And they don't. And, and, and by the way, one of them's so bad that proud to be a pedophile. Don't care about getting caught. I want what I want. This guy on the far left, Jason Handy. I'm gonna play a clip, but I'm gonna tell you right now it's very disturbing because he got close with one of the kids on the cast. Got close with families. Was having prayer meetings with mm -hmm. people. You know, talking about Jesus and all this. And once he got close with these people, he did it to get to their kids. And once he got to the kids and got everybody's trust, he's like, it's time. So he started emailing one of the little girls. Mom saw it. She was approving everything. They would email, you know, he was telling her about how good she is and telling her about what he did and, you know, seemed innocent enough. And then out of the blue, just sent a pic of himself jerking off. Mm -hmm. Oh, shit. Yeah. And what happened? That's what I mean by don't care. What happened? The mom, I mean, the girl immediately shut the computer and told her mom. Mm -hmm. And this guy could give a shit less. He was like, I, you know, this is what I wanted. And she said, I got an email from Jason. It was a picture of him naked masturbating. And when they went and looked on his computer for other material, they, of course, they found tons of child pornography, but they found manifestos. Like he was confessing. Mm -hmm. You're like, I'm a proud pedophile. I can't wait to find my next victim. <laughs> you know what I mean? The guy was a horrible human being, man. And so this, and, and I'm telling you this because this leads to a bigger problem where I think is the, the real concern of this, of this documentary where we really should be looking at things. Dan has apologized and he's done. All right. I'm not saying again, he was very wrong, but he's done. But there's a bigger problem that's going on here where these pedophiles are, you know, uh, are, are, are part of that problem. And it's that's not pedophiles. You know, it's people that we think are innocent that a part of the problem here. Uh, that's where we get into Drake Bell's story. I mean, his is really horrible, man. So he des he describes how this guy, Brian Peck, and that's the guy in the, that's the guy in the center right there. But you talk about a piece of work. He methodically stalked Drake Bell under the guise of being friends. You know, he he would say, let's hang out, let's go to Disney uh, uh, Disneyland. Uh, you want to go get lunch, uh, and then they, you know, I'm gonna bring some, some of my boys to see your concert. Yeah, I'm gonna go see how that's right. I'm gonna go see your concert. Uh, once he got his trust, he started just doing awful, awful things to this kid, man. Well, he also separated him from his father. Sure did. His father was the one person going, "Why is this forty year old, year old man hanging around you? This ain't, this ain't cool." And he was a Svengali, man. Mm -hmm. He was just sitting up there, just, just plotting the whole time and once and that was the worst because once he got him away from his dad just like a predator man he yeah. isolated him yeah. and zoomed in on this on this poor guy man it's, i mean this it ruined drake bell it, it ruined, ruined everybody yeah i mean the stuff he describes you know he he's breaking down because he can't even describe it all yeah he couldn't say anything he said he stopped the interview and said listen uh, let's do this you imagine the worst things that can happen when you sexually uh, you know molest and assault somebody and that's how i can describe it 
You know, he ruined this guy's family. He ruined his finances. He ruined his future of being anything. He actually almost had him carry on the cycle of abuse. Mm. Drake Bell got uh, uh, into some trouble. Did he? Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 don't, I mean, I and mean, in, in here he mentions how he was starting to abuse alcohol. No, nah, he was getting, a, he was probably getting too close to somebody else. Now, it didn't mm -hmm. turn sexual, okay. but he was getting to a, you know, it was, it was probably a little suspect that yeah. he was doing with somebody. And he admitted to it. And, and yeah, and he was only 15 when all this was going on. Yeah. Yeah, he was talking, that's right, he was talking to a minor. Mm -hmm. yeah, who knows where I was going to go. This guy was, call, was, he was stalking his kid so much, he was calling his girlfriend when he couldn't reach him on his phone. Uh, but this is what I'm talking about where things get bigger. This is what we should be looking at. So this guy goes to trial, Brian Peck. And you can hear what uh, Drake Bell has to say about how this trial went. Brian had been convicted but getting all of this support from a lot of people in the industry and yeah, I was pretty shocked. You know, I'm not going to name the people watch the documentary because honestly, I don't know. All I know is that while we can use excuses, some of these people probably didn't know the full details of what this guy Brian Peck was doing. There's also the issue of Brian Peck confessing. Mm -hmm. And it's said that a lot of these people probably knew about this confession. So this is, I mean, this is what I've always said about Hollywood. You think I'm just, I don't know if people think I'm just, uh, I'm just bitter or I'm, I just, you know, uh, I, I, I got an issue. I can't let go with Hollywood. I hate Roman Polanski so much. And I just, I, you know, project on everybody in Hollywood. No, Hollywood is a, is a, you know, is a, is a, is a sick place, man. That's why I always look at these stars that, you know, kiss ass to these powerful people because they're going to do that with anybody, whether they're pedophiles or not whether rapist or not, they're going to kiss ass with anybody to save their career, to not cause waves, to protect a friend that they think they might get a favor from. Are they just cowards and don't want to do anything and turn a blind eye? You know, um, while we're trying to paint Dan Schneider as a pedophile, you know, we got this bigger issue of real pedophiles uh -huh. and people who enable them. Yeah. You know, there's always this bigger issue of how Hollywood actors always knew, producers always knew, you know, parents knew, you know, I mean, what? That's so why you had this shit happen with Weinstein, Polanski, Cosby, you know, uh, uh, name any other, anybody that's, you know, has violated anybody. Somebody knew. Yeah. And a lot of it happens. I mean, within that bubble is people who don't want to say something because they don't want to ruin their career or they don't want to lose their job. And it's people in the, the cast and the crew and the parents. Yeah. And a lot of people who are like. I just don't want to let this go. Yeah. And so, so yep. it all perpetuates. Yep. Uh, and somebody named, yeah, R. Kelly, you know, as a, you know, we we do it. Hollywood does it. You know, look at it, cases that are not as extreme, but, you know, Kanye. You know, that's why I'm always mad about this shit, because we always everybody's an enabler. They do it. We want our we, we want our music. We want our movies. So we 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 overlook it. You know, sick, man. And uh, it's worse when it happens to kids because. You know, that's another thing that this that we should look at. You know, the 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 Dan Schneiders of the world are many in plenty, and they were there before he was. And there's always somebody out there ruining the lives of these children, whether it be because of something as horrible as you know sexual abuse or just working them too hard, <laughs> driving them to the point where they they got access to drugs and, and alcohol, and they, you know and 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 when these when they're when they're when those, when those lives are uh, are getting messed up, you know if the the media is a problem because it pushes them to even be more like that because the media wants a story, mm -hmm. you know and we, we we and we laugh about it sometimes, you know because I I can remember us you know the the, the two Corys Corey Feldman and Corey Hain, mm -hmm. Corey Feldman is the one that died right yeah you no, know we know Corey Hain Corey Hain you know I remember you know, I'm guilty I remember laughing at Corey Hain's videos when he was clearly a teenager on cocaine mm -hmm. and we thought oh look at this kid he's crazy you know. And we just we just forget how these kids are being pushed, and then once they're once they're corrupted, once they're addicted, once they're torn apart and worn out, they push them even more just so they can get a story. You know, the the TMZs and the in the in the in the you know in the and, and, and any other you know gossip mag out there. You know, they just you know it's it's, it's they're, 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 like I said, there's a bigger problem here, man. You know, and that's the Dan Schneider thing is really bad. But I don't like the way they're using him to promote this when they have this right here. Yeah. 
And, yeah, they, and they still make it seem like he's part of this this, this pedophilia uh, stuff going on. I know. And he's not. And no, not only does he explain that he's not, Drake Bell even says he was like the one of few people who stood up for me. Yeah, no, Drake Bell, uh, he, say what you will, they try to make it seem like he corrupted uh, uh, Amanda Bynes. Amanda Bynes. Yeah. He was yeah. actually kind of there for Amanda Bynes. I'm not, again, not trying to defend the guy. And if that's what you think we're doing, I don't know what to tell you. But uh, yeah, man, you know, I don't, you know, they, they really should be trying to, you know, expose the bigger issue, which is the industry itself. Yeah. And, I'm, and, 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 and tell you something that's really horrible here. Uh, that guy, to show you how bad this is, that guy, Brian Peck, he was convicted, served his time, got out, and who did he end up working for? Disney. Worked yep. on the sweet life of Zack and Cody. Yep. Mm. And, he, and, he, and he went to jail for less than two years. Yeah. I'm glad this documentary exists, and I'm disappointed with how it's handling things, too. It's put me in a weird position. Um, because I think you really are, you know, it's good to get the people in there and, and to look at it, but to really do it by villain, you know, villainizing somebody who is already a villain, don't get me wrong, and de again, deserves everything they get, but, you know, just try to, you know, just use that when, they, you know, there's more horrible things being going on. I didn't really like it. Yeah, it's like much. they they built on, they knew the rumors were out there. So they're like, well, we can get people as long as we focus on this. Yeah. And I was like, uh, this whole thing with that uh, pet guy, that's that's the bigger that's the much bigger topic. Yeah, yeah. all but these. He's people. not as big as a name is. Right, but he, he's, that's, he's, that's yeah. why he was a piece of shit too. You know, I mean, again, he said he's sorry. I don't, I don't know how sorry he is. Or he isn't, but you know, I, like I said, I believe people can change. But he was a big piece of shit too back then. But him rating people like that. Um, I, also, I, I will tell you uh, if I talk about the production of this, it's. Uh, I'm just, just switching topics here. Just you know, talk, talk about the production here, man. You know, they. I will say that. Uh, it's nothing special. There's a lot of talking. <laughs> it's, you know what I'm saying? It's a lot of yeah, talking. Yeah, yeah. And while people are talking, they just they just switch to just random images. You know what I'm saying? I saw that when y'all finna tell them. Like, what the fuck are they doing? <laughs> yeah, it, it's kind of cheap, man. You know? I, yeah. They, 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 they keyboards and shit. Like, what the hell is going on? Yeah, they didn't have no money for reenactments and things like that. So they just say, all right, here's a cup, <laughs> you know, here's a, here's, a, here's a keyboard, here's a pencil, you know. So it's like, uh, it's, they just kind of, you know, just put in these random filler shots and, I, and to, uh, you know, to fill in over the talking heads. Uh, I have my criticism of this, and I, but I, I feel the documentary is necessary. Yeah, I, I agree. You know? I agree. And, and yeah, uh, everything it shows about Dan Schneider back in the day, yeah, he was a piece of shit. No, that guy yeah, was, as a yeah. boss. He, yeah. But he just wasn't the, the pedophile like the others. No. Other three. What about the guy on the far right, the black guy? Oh, with the glasses. Oh, they didn't talk about him much. Yeah, yeah. They, they I didn't think talk they about got him much. out real quick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they said, oh, no, you don't. We know what you do. <laughs> <laughs> seen, seen enough of you around here. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, no, he's, no, Dan Snyder was a horrible person, man. But these these other things were. Way yeah, way, way, yeah, yeah. If you, I mean, if you really want to compare, you know, I mean, pedophilia is way worse than just being a horrible boss, you know, <laughs> not to discredit what the other victims or alleged victims went through. So, yeah, man. Yeah, that dude. <laughs> yeah, that dude. His dude he already, see, they already looked at him and said, oh, hell no, no, you look like a damn pedophile killer. <laughs> <laughs> These other dudes smiling. You look like, look like a, you on a mission. <laughs> but, yeah, I feel it's necessary, especially for, I feel it's necessary for those who, who were allegedly abused by Dan Schneider is vested it's necessary for them to have their stories told. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's definitely necessary to expose the corruption of Hollywood in the entertainment business, especially when it comes to kids, man. So that's why I'm glad this is out here. Um, when I give it this rating, you, it has nothing to do with the subject matter. I'm just as a, as a whole package, I give it a matinee. Uh, but definitely, if you have a chance, I mean, it's disturbing, but I, it, you should watch it. You should watch it. It's uh, especially if you grew up with and, uh, Nickelodeon. I had kids that grew up in Nickelodeon. It's fascinating and sad what went on behind the scenes. If anything, I'm taking points off. I'm taking points off for the way that this tried to frame things at the beginning, the way the marketing is done, and just the production value of it. You know, not even saying it's terrible. Just you know, it's just nothing special. So, yeah, yeah. And they, yeah I'm, I might go with a with a with a high rental because, the, like you said, this the stuff that's in there is important. Um, and I, I wish it was more front and center. Uh, but everything that's filler and the way it's it's leading, I just hate that so much. Yeah. It, it's what makes me stay away from documentaries because so many of them have turned to that. Yeah. No, I hear you.
Brian Peck's pen pal. I mean, just, again, boy, this dude was a piece of work. His pen pal was John Wayne Gacy. Yeah, he was proud of it. Yeah, proud of it. He had a he, he had a signed clown picture <laughs> autograph by John Wayne Gacy out in the open. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They have a party at his house and proudly show it to everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't this cool? And, and, and we've been writing it. It's one thing to have it. You go like, all right, well, I guess that's a collector's <laughs> item and it'll probably be worth something. It's like, and he wrote me these letters. You're like, okay, I can. <laughs> uh, nice party, man. I gotta go. <laughs> Somebody said that was his pen pal. Hell yeah. yeah. She was probably his drinking buddy at one mm-hmm. time or something. I mean, I don't know how much more of a red flag you need. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, we probably didn't know. Yeah. You know, but then again, if you go back and tell him, man, this fool got a clown picture signed by John Wayne Gacy. I'd like to say, hey, man, you got to go. <laughs> yeah, that's that was a, too much. Yeah, that is a warning sign. You're right. Yeah, that is, that is way too much. I mean, at least I have the decency to hide this right, shit. Right, right, right. People <laughs> were proud. Yeah, no, everybody come check it out. Isn't that cool? <laughs> that's my hey, buddy. Let me block his number. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, you made it to the end of the video. That must mean you really like what we do. So if you do, check out these other videos just like this one. Check out our other YouTube channels and subscribe to join our wonderful Toasty community. And as always, stay toasty.